Alright guys, so right now I'm packing, gonna go to a flight, back to Chicago, then Dallas, Miami, Las Vegas. The biggest thing right now is I'm packing. So this is what I'm packing. Everything that I own in the world is in this. I wear all my heavy stuff. So yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. I'm pretty sure today, John's gonna get a tattoo. So this is gonna be an interesting episode. I'm gonna go to the airport. My flight's at 11, John's at five. So we actually convinced him to go get a tattoo. So that's what's gonna happen today. So you get both me and John and our stories and our mishaps and our weirdness. All right guys, so say hi to you. John. What is up guys? This is the John takeover. Just kidding. But today Mike has gone to the airport. I am getting a tattoo. I'm not gonna tell you what it is yet, but stay tuned. It's gonna be pretty sick. One thing to know about Cebu though is it's actually pretty cool. You can do graffiti here and it's not illegal. So if someone's caught you doing this or drawing this iguana, that thing, you wouldn't get in trouble. It's really artsy here. Alright guys, so we've been chilling at a coffee shop just waiting for the guy to come in and he just showed up so we're about to get this tattoo done. <laughs> Alright, so I'm here at Needlepoint Tattoo. If you want to check out the Instagram, it's right here. Bing. Vince here is going to film me getting tattooed. Yeah, I'm going to film crying. Oh my god. <laughs> done guys I'm joined the tatted club I'll show you in a bit when it heals or like when I take off the wrapping but right now my agenda is to head to the airport and then fly off to Dubai after Dubai I'm heading to Vegas guess who came to say bye to me I'll miss you I'll miss you bye Kevin. What's up guys, just landed in Dubai. I have an eight hour layover here, so let's talk about this new tattoo I got. It's a um, Sideshow Bob from The Simpsons. Just kidding, it's a palm tree. So this tattoo basically symbolizes change and travel for me. Travel because there's palm trees all over the world and change because, so here's my background. I was born and raised in Utah. I was at a point where I was working at a call center and I just dropped out of college and I had no idea what to do with my life. I got an opportunity to go to California and do door-to-door -door sales. I jumped on this opportunity. It's kind of weird because most people think this is really scary, but for me, it was a no-brainer. In California, this started me on the path of self-employment and then later entrepreneurship. But yeah, how I made this decision is because I have a very simple system that I follow when it comes to making, I guess, big changes or big decisions. Basically, think about the very worst possible outcome and then think about the very best possible outcome, okay? So the best possible outcome would have been me making a million dollars becoming rich and then just being Dan Bilzerian the very worst outcome was me going to California with my life savings which was nine thousand dollars at the time and then losing it all not making any sales because it was a hundred percent commission job which is actually what happened so I started with nine thousand I ended up with two thousand dollars and from there I had to just recoup my funds but that's the thing you can always just get your money back Oh my god, it's so loud here. Yeah, so that's actually what happened. I, the very worst possible outcome happened. And I took away from that experience. I took away from that sales experience. And that landed me a job as a promoter, which then found out about e-commerce and blah, blah, blah. Now I'm traveling the world. So that's basically it, guys. Embrace change. Think about your big decisions with the worst possible outcome and the best possible outcome. Make things very simple. Embrace change, get out of your comfort zone, and then just take more action, all right? Peace. So at the airport and they're doing this new thing, when they put a sticker on you depending on which flight you're going to, I feel like I'm in that movie Divergent, except I'm diverging. Oh my God, this is my favorite thing. There's a little like no one in immigration, yay me. So right now I'm freaking bored, waiting for my flight to Taipei. It hasn't arrived yet. I'm gonna go answer some snaps. Sounds good? Sounds good. Hello from 
sunny California, Mike. I saw your email. It said you're uh, creating a TV show. Didn't know if you needed any resources, but I own a 4K cinema camera, and I'm a cinematographer as well. So, me and my wife had reached out to you a while back, told you about when we started our e-commerce business, and we got a couple of sales so far, but it's not quite our area of expertise. And so I've been thinking about going through your program. And uh, I've seen how it's benefited other people. I was like, hey, why not try it for ourselves? But uh, but yeah, the offer still stands. You need anything done with video work, you need some mini advice, let me know. All right, so Jacob Johnson, thank you for that awesome video, man. It's uh, really awesome that I got that on video, and you're going to freak out when you see this on the YouTube video. But yeah, dude, thank you so much for going through the course. I hope it really helped. Uh, good job on those couple of sales. Keep on going at it. And uh, in regards to your video comment, I think that's freaking awesome, man. Right now, we're still figuring out this entire layout. Uh, we got John following me around. He's pretty good at video cameraing, and uh, we're going to be releasing these YouTube videos every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. As of now, we don't need any help. But advice would be great, like just snapping me or commenting on the YouTube channel. That would be really good, especially as we're testing different formats of the video. If you look at the first video all the way up until now, you can see that it has changed a lot. We added some stuff, we took out some stuff. So if you just leave it in the comments, I read those personally, all right? And I respond to them as fast as I can because it's just amazing to communicate with you guys. And I'm sorry for my harsh voice. I lost it because Philippines have been crazy. But I want to say thank you so much for that snap. Thank you so much for uh, taking taking it seriously and congrats on a couple of sales. You know, slow progress is still progress and that's all that matters. Still have to wait a bit, hopefully I can go there, read some books, listen to some audio tapes. It's only a two hour flight to Taipei, You're gonna be there for six hours, answer some more of your questions, and after, you're gonna go back to the States for a couple of weeks before, of course, going back to Singapore. <laughs> Oh my god, check out all this legroom. This is the audiobook I'll be listening to on my flight to Taipei. Ready to go on to see motherfuckers? Literally gonna go watch a movie for like the next five hours. Six hours later. Getting off the plane right now. Got one more, then I'm gonna be back in Chicago. Okay, I was like lost for a bit. It was because I was on the wrong side of the terminal. It's actually really interesting because whenever you go to these airports, you get lost so easily. So right now, I'm gonna go get something sweet, probably like a smoothie of some sort because I got six hours, and uh, maybe work on some video editing for you guys. Can't literally find water wherever the hell I go. Water is life. Still looking for water. Don't know where the hell it is. Maybe it's here. So you just spent like six hours in a little coffee shop. I had a croissant with like salmon in it. It was really weird because usually you don't eat croissant sandwiches with salmon in it. And uh, right now I'm rushing to go to the place where I'm gonna go finally go on this flight. It took me 13 hours. I put like all the lotion on the tattoo so it's like oddly disgusting and pussing. And oh my God, dude, look at this panda. Respect, homie. You too. So it's a 13 hour flight. I'm gonna be there in the city around seven-ish. I'm gonna go meet up with some friends around there. I'm gonna go sit back and relax because like I've been traveling way too much and just kind of prepare myself for the next week or so before I go back on long-term travel, man. The only downside about like traveling to many different places in a short amount of time is that you get so worn out. So I'm probably go back, get a massage, eat some deep dish pizza, get some kale because I haven't had like kale and I freaking love kale. What else am I gonna do? Oh, I'm gonna get some Jamba juice because I'm a Jamba addict. I need something smoothie like. So one of the funniest things that I've been doing uh, walking around is uh, there's a lot of people here that just wear like masks. I don't know if it's like a health thing or if I'm just uninformed but I was like freaking them out when they like walk by kind of just like a little social experiment. When I see them I'll just like pretend like I'm dying just like like dab really hard, dab really hard and cat cough. And most of the time they just like freak out and jump out of the way. But yeah, it's one of the most emptiest airports and I'm just like being obnoxious, yelling at my camera because I gave no fucks. Literally, that's the funniest thing. When you go around and you see everyone is kind of like in this like little fog, right? Because they're not thinking, they're just doing their, their day to day thing. Or they're just, you know, going with the status quo or their daily routine. Try snapping people out of it. Just doing little things just like to snap people out of their heads and start actually being present in the moment. It's one of the best things you could do to make a friend or also make an enemy, especially if you're doing what I'm doing right now. I don't recommend it. I'm just really bored being here for six hours. I just need human companionship. All right guys, see you guys on the plane.
Guys, we don't recommend this, but uh, we just parked right by a fire hydrant. We're gonna go see where he got shot.